Welcome to the 700 Club. The days change, but the headlines don't. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton went at each other again last night. And this time, it was an event where candidates usually take a break from attacks on the campaign trail. Clinton and Trump spoke at the Al Smith dinner in New York. And as Heather Sells reports, the jokes were mixed with some insults. Just one night after their boxing match, a.k.a. presidential debate in Las Vegas, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump had a hard time keeping the gloves off. At the Catholic charity dinner, where presidential candidates traditionally offer self-deprecating jokes, the two couldn't resist getting in some digs at each other again, with Clinton going after Trump for his remarks about women and their looks. Donald looks at the Statue of Liberty and sees a four. Maybe a five if she loses the torch and tablet and changes her hair. Hillary has been in Washington a long time. She knows a lot about how government works. And according to her sworn testimony, Hillary has forgotten more things than most of us will ever, ever know. That I can tell you. It could have been a tough night for Clinton, given the WikiLeak revelation that some of her top staffers appear to have a low regard for Catholics. Instead, Trump got booed for some of his attacks, although both got in their jabs. Clinton suggested Trump might not like the dinner because it's rigged and tried to tie him to Russia again. But Donald really is as healthy as a horse. You know, the one Vladimir Putin rides around on. Trump joked that the Catholic crowd of 1,000 was Clinton's largest during their campaign and said he was glad some of the Clinton campaign was there. And I got the chance to meet the people who are working so hard to get her elected. There they are, the heads of NBC, <laughs> CNN, CBS, ABC, there's the New York Times right over there and the Washington Post. But Clinton got one of the best laughs of the night when she summed up what many people are thinking with a joke. Some of my critics, they think I only say what people want to hear. Well, tonight that is true. And here's exactly what you want to hear. This election will be over very, very soon. <laughs> Heather Sells, CBN News. Yeah, we all look forward to that day. It's 18 days away. And here's my bold prediction. The campaign for 2020 officially will launch on November 9. Well, in other news, officials in the Philippines are trying to play down their president saying the Philippines is separating from the United States. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte made his surprising announcement during a visit to China. Duterte said America has lost now and that he had realigned himself with China's ideology. But Philippine leaders say their country is not cutting economic ties with the U.S. Their trade minister told CNN they're simply strengthening relations with China and other Asian nations. Well, here at home, a new faith-based film starring Aaron Bethay, who gained fame from the movie Fireproof, is tackling a tough theme, faith and tragedy. The film is called New Life. Wendy Griffith sat down with Bethay to talk about her latest project and why she shaved her head for the role. Remember Aaron Bethay? He has fixed me coffee, bought me these pitiful little flowers, and just now called just to see if I'm doing okay. But they made her feature film debut in Fireproof, where she played a neglected wife opposite Kirk Cameron in the 2008 box office surprise hit. Cameron played her firefighter husband who was a hero at work, but clueless when it came to keeping their marriage alive. She's probably whining to her friends. I can see them all right now having some sort of group hug. But they says Fireproof was a life-changing movie, not only for those who saw it, but for many who acted in it. It changed everything for me. I mean, I was sort of focused on a career path that was really in theater and in live performance. And because of the success of Fireproof, everything has shifted to film, um, which I have found is actually my, my true love. Today, Erin is in several movies hitting the big screen, including her latest, New Life, which she also co-wrote and produced. What kind of movie is this? What's it about? 
New Life is a romance, um, very similar to like The Notebook, um, that sort of thing. So any of the ladies out there who love those Nicholas love Sparks Notebook. films, yes, um, this is right up their alley. New Life tells the story of Ben and Ava, who meet as children and fall in love, but are later confronted by Ava's devastating diagnosis and struggle to cope with the meaning of it all. That. We are not gonna accept that. You shaved your head for this role. <laughs> what was that like? I did, it, you, you know, it was the right choice. Um, for me, I feel like there are so many women who don't have a choice in losing their hair. And it was something that uh, gave some authenticity to the character. I'm not brave for shaving my head, they're brave. And uh, my hair grows back and I'm 100% healthy. I bet you have a drawer full of really cool scarves now. I do, and like, it's funny, because I had actually bought a wig because I thought I was gonna be really self-conscious about it and things like that, and I ended up never using it. I just like wore the bald head out in public. Bethay says unlike Fireproof, which was an overtly faith-based film, New Life is more subtle in its redemptive message. And that's where new life falls, and we're hoping it appeals to a really wide audience of women who have loved all these Nicholas Sparks films, but the Nicholas Sparks films also tend to have sexual content and things like that. So we wanted to offer a romance that was for everyone. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. Thanks, Wendy. And New Life opens in select theaters next Friday, October 28th. Well, Jewish people around the world are celebrating the biblical Feast of Tabernacles. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, it's also a meaningful time for Christians. They came from Asia. And from the Pacific Ocean. During the Feast of Tabernacles, thousands of Christians come from all over the world to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, like these Christians from mainland China. They came to support Israel. We love Israel. We stand with Israel. And we want to be here. Every year we make it a point to be here. And we bring in people to show that there are friends for Israel. Israel has been a close ally of Singapore since the beginning and we owe Israel so much. They've helped us when we were nothing. Israel is the one who helped us. It is my honor to be here to support Israel on behalf of my country. When many nations are turning against Israel, this support is a morale boost for Israelis like this tour guide. I'm excited working with pilgrims that love Israel and come here with all the problems yeah. that they have in their country, not acknowledging the state of Israel, uh -huh. but yet coming here and supporting us. Many believe this feast is prophetic. The prophet Zechariah said one day all the nations would come and to uh, worship the Lord and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. You're not only remembering God's provision in the wilderness at this feast, but you're looking forward to the Messianic Kingdom. We believe this is the feast of the birthing of the Messianic Kingdom when the Lord arrives to take up the throne of David in Jerusalem. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. A strong show of solidarity for the state of Israel. Gordon, back yeah, to you. Very strong show of solidarity. And the mix has changed. It used to be in years past, the primary delegations came from Europe and North America, but now it's shifted. And now you're seeing Latin America, Asia, Africa. It's, it's wonderful. The number of nations that are coming to celebrate uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. What a wonderful story.